Hi friends, this is our 10th lecture of electric potential and capacitors and today we are going to the second topic called as the capacitors. We have completed the electric potential and also the dielectrics. Okay, so before introducing, before that introducing myself, this is our physics gallery Asha Dino. Hoping all of you are doing very well with your studies. If there is any doubt, you may ask it in the comment section. We will discuss it in the lecture time. Okay. So today we are going to discuss about capacitors. Okay. We are going to discuss about capacitors. So capacitors are certain devices which are generally used to store DC charge. Capacitors are the device which are used to store DC charge. Okay. So, what are capacitors? These are device. Capacitors are device which are used to, which are used to store charges, electric charges. That is DC charge, not AC, but DC. So, device which are used to store electric charges are called as capacitor. Is it clear? So, what is a capacitor? It is a device which is used to store the electric charges. And suppose we have got a capacitor in our hand. We have got a capacitor. Okay. But in order to store the charges in it, if we have to put some charge inside it or to it, what we have to do? To move a charge from one point to another point, we have to do some work. And that work to bring a charge from one point to another point was called as the potential difference. Okay. So, suppose we have got a capacitor. This is our capacitor A. Okay. And this has the ability to store the charge. But in order to store the charge, it wants charge. And in order to provide the charge to A, we have to do some work to bring some charge from one point to A. Is it clear? And that work done to move a charge from one point to another point was called as the potential. That means without providing potential difference, whether the capacitor A store charge? Never. So, in order to store charge by the capacitor A, certain potential difference has to be provided. Okay. Suppose we have provided a potential difference of 1 volt. How much potential difference? 1 volt. And it stores a charge Q. Okay. Sometime later, we increase the potential to 10 volt. 10 volt. Then what about the amount of charge stored? Whether it is Q itself? No, the charge increases. The amount of charge is Y because potential difference is the work done to bring the charge from one point to another point. As the potential difference increases, more work is done to bring more charges. That is more amount of charge is stored in the capacitor when we increase the potential difference. When we increase the potential difference to suppose 100 volt, the charge stored will further increases. Is it clear? When we have provided a potential difference of 1 volt, the charge stored is Q, Q amount, Q coulomb. When the 1 volt is increased to 10 volt, the charge also increases because as the potential difference increases, work done increases. For uh, work done for what purpose? To move the charge from one point to another point increases and as the uh, potential further further increased more and more amount of charge is stored. This means that this means that the charge is stored in a capacitor. We were right. The charge stored in a capacitor. The charge stored in a capacitor will be directly proportional to the potential difference provided to it. Is it clear? When the potential was 1 volt, Q charge is stored. When the potential is increased to 10 volt, Q also increases. When the potential is increased to 100 volt, the amount of charge is stored, 
further increases. Therefore, we can say the charge stored in a capacitor is directly proportional to the charge stored in a capacitor is directly proportional to the potential difference provided to it. Okay, is it clear? So, we are writing the charge stored in a capacitor. In a capacitor. The charge stored in a capacitor is directly proportional to, tell me, the potential difference. The potential difference provided to it. The potential difference provided to it. Is it clear? Okay, so what is a capacitor? It is a device which is used to store DC charges. But in order to store the charges in a capacitor, certain potential difference is required. As the potential difference increases, more and more charges are stored. As the potential difference decreases, lesser amount of charge will be stored. Therefore, we can say the charge stored in a capacitor is always directly proportional to the potential difference provided to it. Or the charge stored Q is directly proportional to the potential difference we provided to it. Okay. Now there is a proportionality. When we remove this proportionality, we will get a constant. And that constant is taken as C. Now the equation becomes Q is equal to C into V. Very important equation. Now the equation for charge becomes Q is equal to CV. And here the proportionality constant C itself is called as, C is called as, it is also called as the capacitance. Okay, so earlier we have studied that capacitor is a device which is used to store the electric charge and its ability is also called as capacitance. Here the constant C is also capacitance. And capacitance may also be defined as, from this equation we can write, C is equal to Q by V. So how can you define capacitance of a capacitor? Capacitance is the ratio of the charge stored to the potential difference provided. Capacitance is the ratio of charge stored in a capacitor to the potential difference provided to it. Is it clear? Is it clear? So, a capacitor may store charge, but in order to store the charge inside it, it requires certain potential difference. And the charge stored in the capacitor will be always directly proportional to the potential difference provided to it. Q is proportional to V, Q is equal to CV, and C is equal to Q by V, We therefore C, the capacitance, may be defined as the ratio of, how it is defined? It is the ratio of capacitance is the ratio of the charge stored, the charge stored in the capacitor, the charge stored in the capacitor to the potential difference provided to it provided to it. Is it clear? And the ability to store the charges by a capacitor is also may be called as capacitance. Capacitance may also be defined as may also be defined as the ability to store the charges. The ability to store the charges. Is it clear? Okay, so we have taken the topic called as the capacitor. So what is a capacitor? It is a device which is used to, used to store electric charges. And its ability to store the charge is called as the capacitance. But in order to store charges in a capacitor, it requires a certain potential difference. And the potential difference will be directly proportional to the charge stored. We can say the charge stored in a capacitor is always directly proportional to the potential difference provided to it. Q is proportional to V, Q is equal to CV, where C is equal to Q by V. Therefore, capacitance C may also be defined as the ratio of the charge stored in the capacitor to the potential difference provided to it. 
Is it clear? So now we know what is the capacitor and what is its capacitance. How to define capacitance? May be defined as the ability to store the charge. Or numerically we can say it as the ratio of charge stored in a capacitor to the potential difference provided to it. Okay. Just like the capacitance of the capacitor, you may also have your, your own capacitance. How much work is provided? How much work you have done to study a particular topic and to store the topics inside your brain? That is your capacitance. Is it clear? Similarly, here the capacitance is the ability to store the charge. How much work is provided to it? Lesser the work provided and greater the charge stored, the greater will be its capacitance. Okay, is it clear? So, we were discussing about the capacitor and the capacitance. May I rub the board? You may pause the video and take the notes. And from this topic, we got a new term, a new physical quantity called as the capacitance. So, we want to know the unit of this capacitance also. Okay. So, can you tell me what is the unit of capacitance? How to take the unit? Our equation is Q is equal to CV, basic equation. From that, we can write C is equal to Q by V. So, if we want the unit of capacitance, unit of capacitance, take Coulomb by volt, Coulomb by this is not capacitance. This is Coulomb. I will write Coulomb by volt. And this Coulomb by volt is also called as Farad. Represented by the letter capital F. So the unit of capacitance is always taken as Farad capital F. Okay. Which is equivalent to Coulomb by volt. So how can you define what Farad capacitance Define if the question is like this, what is this one farad capacitance? So how can we define one farad capacitance? So we will write one farad is equal to one coulomb by one volt. That means if we have provided one volt of potential difference to a capacitor, we have provided one volt of potential difference. When one volt of potential difference is provided to a capacitor, Suppose it stores one coulomb of charge inside it. What was this one coulomb? How much electrons constitute one coulomb? Tell me. Yes. Some of you have told. Or most of you have told it. Okay. So 6.25 into 10 raised to 18 electrons. That is when one volt potential difference is provided to a capacitor. Suppose this much of electrons are are transferred. That means either positive or negative charges. When electrons are removed, positive charges are created. When electrons are gained, negative charges are created. Okay, whatever may be, when this much of electrons are transferred, when a 1 volt potential is provided, then we can say the capacitance of that capacitor is 1 farad. So how can you define 1 farad? You may write if 1 volt of potential difference provided to a capacitor stores 1 coulomb of charge in it, then the capacitance of the capacitor is 1 farad. Once more, when 1 volt of potential difference provided to a capacitor stores 1 coulomb of charge in it, then the capacitance of the capacitor is 1 farad. Okay, is it clear? So, you may define the unit also. Together with this unit, you may write the dimensions also. Okay, it is very important for our entrance questions also. So, how to take the dimension? You may take the dimension of any physical quantity you've got. Okay, so how to take the dimension of this farad? This is Coulomb by volt. Coulomb, charge. Okay, what was the dimension of charge? 80. Then potential difference. It is the work done to move the charge. What is work done? Force into displacement by charge. Take the dimension. Force ML T raised to minus 2 mass into acceleration. Then displacement by AT. Okay. Altogether, we will take the farad as. How to take the farad? 
the dimension of area 1 coulomb 80 by m l square t raised to minus 2 by 80. This 80 jumps to the numerator. Then the farad becomes yes, a square t square by m l square t raised to minus 2. Putting together m raised to minus 1, l raised to minus 2, t raised to minus 2 on top becomes plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 4, a square. This will be the dimension of our capacitance C. Okay. You have to write the dimension of each and every quantity when you got a new term. Okay. So, now we know what is capacitance, what is its unit, how to define the unit, how to take the dimension and so on. Is it clear? Okay. So, what is a capacitor? Now all of you know what is a capacitor. Important, capacitor stores only DC charges, not AC. It stores only DC. We are now studying about the direct current. So, our charges are DC charges. Therefore, our capacitor stores the DC, never AC. Okay. So, we know what is a capacitor. Just to take a pause and go through the topic. Okay. Hoping all of you understood what is this capacitor. And now, we have to study... Or we will take different types of capacitors, which is based on their shape. There are different types of capacitors based on their shape. A spherical capacitor, whose shape is spherical. A cylindrical capacitor, whose shape is a cylinder. Then, based on the shape, there are different types of capacitors. And among, among all of the type of capacitors, we have to study about the two. The first one is a spherical capacitor. The first one is a spherical capacitor. And the second one is a parallel plate capacitor. The second one is parallel plate capacitor. Okay. So, there are different types of capacitors based on its shape. Among which we have to study in detail about a spherical capacitor and a parallel plate capacitor. So, the first one is spherical capacitor. You may write the first one spherical capacitor. So, what is a spherical capacitor? It is a capacitor in the shape of a sphere. So, this is our spherical capacitor. Okay. This is our spherical capacitor. For any sphere, the radius R will be given. Surely, the radius R will be given. Okay. So, there is a spherical capacitor of radius R, which is kept in free space which is kept in free space. Now we want, what is the capacitance of this spherical capacitor? So we are going to capacitance of a spherical capacitor. For any capacitor, the capacitance has the basic equation, C is equal to, yes tell me, Q by B. So, in order to find the capacitance of this vertical capacitor, we have to at first to provide some potential difference. We have to provide some potential difference. When we provide some potential difference V to this vertical capacitor, suppose it stores a charge Q. It stores a charge Q. When V potential difference is provided, Q charge is stored. So, our capacitance is Q by V. And what was the potential due to a thin spherical shell? A spherical shell. What was the importance? When we have studied the electric potential, electric potential topic, we have studied that throughout the sphere, the electric potential remains the same. Is it clear? So we can write C is equal to Q by potential due to a thin spherical shell. So what is the potential due to a Thin spherical shell. What is the potential due to a thin spherical shell? Tell me the equation was 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q by the radius R. Do you remember? Or otherwise go to the topic. Electric potential due to a thin spherical shell. You may got it. So capacitance C is equal to Q by 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q by R. Cancelling QQ, we will get 1 by 
1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 into 1 by r. QQ cancelled. Taking the reciprocal, the capacitance of the spherical capacitor becomes 4 pi epsilon 0 r. So what is the equation for the capacitance of a spherical capacitor? Now the capacitance of a spherical capacitor becomes 4 pi epsilon 0 r. Very important. Pause it and take the notes. Okay, hoping you understood the capacitance of a spherical capacitor. If so, can you tell me what are the factors on which the capacitance of a spherical capacitor depends? The factors. From the equation, do you show some factors? Yes, there is a radius. Other than this radius, what about epsilon zero? It is the permittivity of free space. Suppose the shell is placed in another medium. Inside the shell, another medium is kept. Then what happens? The capacitance changes. Okay, may I rub this? So, we are now going to the factors affecting. Factors affecting the capacitance of a spherical capacitor. Since the equation for capacitance is 4 pi epsilon 0 r, the first factor is medium itself. Okay, that is, suppose a dielectric medium is filled inside the capacitor. The equation for capacitance in the medium becomes 4 pi. How to take epsilon 0 now? If a medium is kept, you have to take it as k epsilon 0. Remember, we have discussed it in the topic, Coulomb's law. Okay, so k epsilon 0 into r. This is clear to you? Hoping this is. Otherwise, you have to go to electric charges and electric field, Coulomb's law. If you type that, you will get that topic this, dielectric constant and relative permittivity. Okay, so 4 pi k epsilon 0 r. Or we can write c in a medium is equal to, we can write this as 4 pi epsilon 0 r into k. Or c in a medium is equal to c in free space. This is the equation for capacitance in free space into k times. That is, as the dielectric medium is filled, its capacitance increases by k times. Okay, so as the medium changes, as the medium with a greater dielectric constant is filled, the capacitance, the ability to store the charge also increases the first thing. And what about the second factor? After this epsilon zero, we have seen radius. Yes, the second factor is the radius. From the equation itself, we know capacitance is directly proportional to the radius r. Greater the radius of the shell or the capacitor, greater will be its capacitance. C proportional to r means greater the radius, greater will be the capacitance. As the radius of the capacitor increases, its capacitance also increases. Okay, as capacitance increases, the ability to store the charges also increases. That is, here we can write capacitance is proportional to R for a spherical capacitor. Similarly, capacitance is also proportional to the charge. As the capacitance increases, charge stored increases. Therefore, we can write as the radius increases, capacitance increases. As capacitance increases, charge stored increases. Therefore, may I write this relation? The radius of a capacitor is directly, spherical capacitor is directly proportional to the charge stored. That is, if you take two identical spheres, very important, if you take two identical spheres of same radius and brought in contact and removed, the charge in them, both the charge Q1 and Q2, will be equally shared among the capacitors. Why? If the radius are same, capacitance will be same. If the capacitance is same, charge stored will be also same. So if two spherical capacitors, if two spherical structures are kept in contact, identical spherical structures are kept in contact and removed, what happens? Charges are shared equally. We have done this problem in the topic electric charges and electric field, lecture 4. 
where we have studied a problem, a numerical problem, where we have discussed about the identical spheres. If the spheres are not identical, the charge shared will be also not identical. Charges are stored only in the ratio of their radius. If the radius ratio is 1 is to 2, the charge will be also stored in the ratio of 1 is to 2. Okay, if the radius ratio is 2 is to 3, the charge will be also stored in the ratio of 2 is to 3 for spherical capacitors. Very important. Is it clear? Is it clear? Okay, so when two spherical capacitors comes in contact, whether always the charges are shared equally? No, the charges are shared equally only if the two capacitors are identical, having the same radius. If the two spherical capacitors which are brought in contact are not identical, what happens? Charges are distributed only in the ratio of their radii. Okay, that is we can write here we can, that is very important here. Okay, you have to rememberize it always. R1 by R2 will be equal to Q1 by Q2. The charge ratio will be always in the radius ratio. Okay. Is it clear? So, we have all discussed the factors affecting the spherical capacitance also. The first one is medium. As the dielectric constant of the medium involved increases, the capacitance also increases. And the second one is radius. Capacitance is directly proportional to radius. And since capacitance is also proportional to the charge, several numerical questions related to that radius and charge also may be obtained. Okay. There you have to think that sharing of charges when two spherical Capacitors are kept in contact will be equal only if when the two capacitors are of identical shape. That is having the same radius. If their radius are different, the charge stored will be in the ratio of their radius. Okay. Lesser radius, lesser charge. Larger radius, larger charge. Great amount of charges will be stored in it. Okay. So, this is about the spherical capacitor. So, today in this video, we are studying up to this topic okay and in the next lecture we will discuss about the next type of capacitor parallel plate capacitor hoping you understood all of this and if you got any doubt when you watch this video you may ask it in the comment box and we will discuss in the lecture time so till the next video we go through the topic very well and learn it very well